Welcome to the Chat Club Podcast, where you are not alone in your mental health journey. It's okay that you're not okay today. Where discussions on mental health challenges like anxiety, grief, interviews with people that deal with challenges in mental health. Also, discussions on positive coping mechanisms, positive motivation, self-help, a little hope, and thinking creatively. Remember, there's only one rule in Chat Club. Everybody talks about Chat Club. Take a seat, relax, and listen. Here is your host, Alan Hilchey. Hello everyone, it's Alan Hilchey here. Welcome back to Chat Club. I know it's been a while, um, haven't done a lot of podcasts, probably due to the summer and just everything that's going on. I do have some podcasts coming up that are going to be really intriguing and very enlightening. A lot of journeys that people are taking, so I'm going to talk about that at the end of the podcast. Now what I really want to get into is I've noticed everyone about social norms and want to get into social norms and why is it so different for different communities and different generations and you know I just I just find it so intriguing that everyone has a different definition of social norms so social norms are unwritten rules of beliefs attitudes and behaviors that are considered acceptable in a particular social group or culture norms provide us with an expected idea of how to behave and function function to provide order and predictability in society. So social norms are rules, regulations, whatnot. So examples of social norms could be greeting people when you see them, saying thank you for favors, holding the doors for others, which is not happening a lot because the generations are becoming older and don't place those values like back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Men holding, holding doors for females. But that has changed because of feminism and some women want to be equal and don't want to, don't want that. And it's no ill feeling on the men's side because mostly they're doing it because that's how they're brought up. So holding on the door for others, standing out when someone else enters the room, Offering to help someone carry something heavy. Speaking quietly in public places. Waiting in line politely. So these are some of the social norms that I found on the internet. And they talk about the four four keys of social norms. Uh, folkways, mores, taboos, and laws. So taboos are, you know, drinking and driving, that sort of thing. Laws are the laws that we can't break or we go somewhere or we have conditions of parole or probation or whatnot. So I want to get into why is social norms, why is the metrics moving so much in our society, which I find so enlightening because when I, when I observe things and I've been doing it over the decades, like my social norms when I grew up was Gay people are weird. They're, you know, it's not normal. Raised as a Catholic. So I come back to a story. I'm not sure if I told on my podcast before. But I talked about the time that I was in university and I was out having a few drinks. I had some friends and then some other guys joined and I got to know this Rob guy. And we kind of clicked a little bit and we had some good conversations and seemed like a pretty cool guy to me. So the next day, we're in university, he comes and sits down, and I say, hi, how the long over for the night, and we kind of talk back and forth, and all of a sudden, he throws, yeah, my boyfriend and I aren't uh, seeing eye to eye, which threw me for a loop. I didn't have the metric or knew that he was gay. He was a perfectly normal human being in my mind. So therefore, my train of thought was, it was a shock, but... When I processed that at an early age, I think it was in my 20s, early 20s, that, and I'm 50, so that's that's about 30 years ago, and uh, homosexual wasn't just coming out, gay pride was just, just that whole thing was starting to come out, which I thought was great, because why hide who you are? Why hide makes you feel safe? This Rob fellow that I knew, knew around the university, he didn't bother me. 
He didn't put on his beliefs or his sexuality towards me. He knew it was heterosexual, and there was not a friendship like that at all, which really helped me to understand, to be open to other sexualities or how people feel. You know, society is changing every day, and there's people that have safe places and sexuality and how they feel or how they dress could be a part of the equation. Now, the part of the equation is it's victimless. It's not hurting anybody. It's, you know, I recall going to the mall last week and seeing two individuals that had elf ears and purple hair and a fancy costume trying to emulate that they were elves. Didn't bother me. They weren't hurting me. Did I find it out of place? Yes, but I get used to it. And, you know, kudos for them for being brave to bring what makes them happy and embrace their beliefs and how they feel and how they want to dress and how they want to act. As long as it doesn't hurt anybody, I don't see the problem. My problem is these communities that are backwards, um, that older communities that hold values and don't see past the person. They see what they're doing as being bad, so they stereotype them as being weird or gay or outlandish or anything like that, which isn't the case. It's a form of expression. There, We've been in society where there's so many ways to have a conversation and not go past the social norms or deviate from what people want to hear. We're always putting on performances. It's no different than our mental health. And, you know, you're having a bad day and you go, I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine. I'm good. I'm okay. You know, those sort of... I mean, what I find with social norms, and I've come across a few stories, and which really opened my eyes even more, it's a situation where people dress differently. People feel safe and... One that really bothers me out there is females that dress like males and nobody turns her head. Nobody says nothing. Nobody says anything but, oh, she's a butch. Carry on. Um, they dress in boots, man's pants, shirt, and nobody blinks an eye. So comes to my other section of men dressing like women and they feel safe and it's their femininity coming out and they feel safe and could be an alter ego or a personality. They're not hurting anybody. I just don't understand why people have such hatred towards them. I thought we got past the 21st century and talking about the social norms and getting past it. So I find that very disheartening to see why, you know, males are looked upon, is it because they are the breadwinners in the family and they're supposed to be tough and they're supposed to be so tough that they're not supposed to do that stuff? Is that the norm we're portraying? That's a lot of pressure on a man. And you wonder why men don't speak up and talk about things and you wonder why they don't express themselves. Well, that's the reason why. is because they get stereotyped, proded. If he dresses, uh, he could be heterosexual dressing and he's automatically gay or whatever and I don't like it I find it um I just don't like the how they're tagged or how they're you know how people look at them they're individuals and every individual has their own way and I thought our society was breaking from that sort of mentality that men are tough Men aren't supposed to do that. Men are the breadwinners, so they're supposed to have the hard shell on and they're not supposed to express themselves. To me, it seems like a double-edged sword. Well, you're saying, yeah, it's okay for them to speak out, but yet it's not okay to do the other thing. It's not okay for them to dress like females. It's not okay for them to do certain things that are deemed normal in our society that men are supposed to have in our society, which I just find appalling. Um... So, I mean, that was my biggest thing. Um, you know, I see in the UK that there's a lot of things on Instagram where men are actually in kilts and high heels and they're wearing them for... So, you know, they're doing it in the UK. Are we 
that far behind the times where it's going to take a 10, 10 years for the for men to actually if they feel like dressing up like a in a skirt and that and feel feminine that it's going to take 10 years for that to happen you know cross dressing it's not a sign of homosexuality but in our mind and our norms yeah that is but I don't think it's it's okay for a woman to express her manly side to do different things but it's not okay for a man like it's it's a double standard um, I, I just don't like it that, I mean, it's curiosity. It makes them feel safe. What if they had something in their life that maybe they were a victim of something and this is what makes them safe? So we're going to take that away from them and make them self-harm themselves or feel like they're, they're not supposed to do that and they're wrong and to feel ashamed of who they are? Anyway, I just find it odd how our social metrics move with society norms and I find there's not enough positivity on people being who they are you know like men wearing tight clothes and you know tank top or whatever whatever makes them feel you know happy you know happy it's it's about you know the expression you know drag queen Meaning a man who dresses as a woman for entertainment purposes. But what if there's more than entertainment? Maybe it's maybe it's their stressor. Maybe it's their coping mechanism for mental health. Maybe it's their coping mechanism that a traumatic thing has happened to them. So don't always judge the book by the cover because there's always something in the book that's describing why the person is actually doing certain things. I'm having a hard time, like, people are changing their minds all the time. They're not affecting me in my life. As long as they're doing what they're supposed to do and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, I'm okay with it. So, I really have a hard time in non-binary is, is the term that identifies a male as displays uh, traditional feminine characteristics. What is traditional? There is another word we're throwing out. Traditional. Barefoot and pregnant. It's changed over the decades what women are today. Women are just as involved in society, politics, business, CEOs, you name it. Women are doing the same thing. And I think it's fantastic. I still do think the white male has a lot of say in this generation too much I know for safe places for men that do this and I'm sure they have groups and stuff and I I applaud them to have support that they can come out and be themselves and be who they are sometimes it's it's over time and I'm sure it's with every person that has had change it's it's a different type of emotions you know if you know you're looking at religion you know traditions and family traditions and society the norms the everything now it's down to one thing why are we judging people on how they look and where they are and I know it's human nature and I know it's this and that but we gotta move past this you know it took us a long time to have the gay pride day and it took us a long time for the LGBTQ plus, and I said it right, for them to come out and be sort of safe. They're not totally safe. There's still targets on their back today. Do I think that's right? Absolutely not. And as long as they're not stressing in anybody's lives and they're not affecting children and these pride days and all this, all you're doing is opening the mind up to accept people for who they are. You're teaching children that some people are different and that's okay. We know what the person is and we know what values and ethics the person has. Because they're dressing like a man and they're female, that doesn't change who they are. And the same as a man dressing like a woman. It doesn't change the values of who they are. They still have tons of respect for other people. What I don't like, and I'm going to stress on this as men, 
men dresses like a woman, they have a business, they have a high paying job or they have anything. They have to hide this till it's accepted in society. Imagine how they feel. They have something to express and they feel feminine that day and they have to hold it in. Wow, I mean, that's that's tough. It's tough for them to interact. It's tough for them to be across, like to be in society. I mean, we don't think twice of other people, like these drag queens that are um, celebrities and have their own shows. Nobody thinks twice. But someone in your community dressed like that, you'd be like, whoa, 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 that weirdo. Not going to hang around there. He'd probably hit on me. And he's totally, totally heterosexual. I have a problem with all this thing. But, you know, I can sit here and go on about these things, but society has to change. The media has to change. Like, I understand we have women that want to be men, men that want to be women. That's a personal choice. That's not up for us to decide or look at it and be, oh, well, you shouldn't do that. Why shouldn't you do that? What's wrong with this? So this leads into, I'm going to interview a few people that have had certain things have happened in their life. Certain things that they have been triggered to do certain things to make them feel good. And I'm hoping at the end of September I'll have this person on there. And hopefully they can share their story. And it was, when I talked to the person, it was kind of a really... Um, really eye-opening story, inspiring, brave. And why do I say those words? Because this person held it in for years. That's what's inspiring. Uh, didn't commit suicide, didn't hurt themselves, didn't victimize other people or hurt other people. His behavior didn't hurt anybody. So... What's going to be so cool about this is the whole thing about this being an interview. And I'm going to have an interview with someone that's had a, a really toxic relationship coming up. And being in with a narcissist and how she got out and how she rebuilt her whole life. Inspiring stuff. So these are the type of things I'm going to open my mind, my channel my podcast because when I talk about mental health it's for everybody when I talk about mental health it's for women, men women non-binary the LGBTQ plus everybody the rich person the poor person I don't care here to help everyone so I hope you enjoyed this podcast I hope most of it was my views and I just wanted people to start thinking outside the box and Start thinking about other people's feelings and how your impact can impact them and how you react. Step away. Process it. You know it's not harmful. I'm Alan Helchi, and thanks so much for listening to the podcast, and I'll see you really soon. Thank you for listening to the Chat Club Podcast with your host, Alan Hilchi. Please subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or Google Play or where you download your podcasts. Be sure to check out Chat Club Podcast on Facebook and on Instagram. Remember, there is only one rule in Chat Club. Everybody talks about Chat Club. Be sure to catch our next episode.